Good evening! Episode 59 of Easy 8's Online Painting Club. My name's Danny, it says it right down there at the bottom of the screen. We got people who've been waiting for 10 minutes before I came online. Dude, you eager. Thanks very much for coming along. I, I hope you guys have all been well. Uh, I've had a really unproductive week, but I've still had a really good week. I've been thinking lots about this week and what I'm going to do on the show, and I'm absolutely stoked to be doing a new project. Uh, old project still ongoing because I haven't done anything, <laughs> but you know that's that's me. Um, yeah, Easy Eight Online Painting Club. If you are new here, this isn't a tutorial by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, I'm not really that good, uh, so it would just be arrogant of me. <laughs> hey, do this. I'm not. That great uh, no this is just an online painting club so you can come along bring your projects along to get them painted with a little bit of live company and watch me do my thing uh, and make mistakes and have successes and just kind of revel in the fact that someone out there like you uh, struggles maybe to to get everything done my target my aim my goal is to get through all of that gray plastic uh, kind of just storing up uh, over there and elsewhere in the house um, yeah so bring your projects along and uh, come and tackle them with me and Leslie and the rest of the community who hopefully be online in just a moment over there in the live chat let me know what your project is this evening if you were working on something I would love to know about it so please do let me know if you're new here or perhaps even if you've been here for a while and you haven't done it yet please do consider subscribing to the show because every little bit really helps me make this show bigger and better for you uh, and for me and uh, that's what i want i want to be able to make this a, a community hub it is already a community hub loads of people come online uh, and watch this stuff now it's cracking man i got 40 subscribers that's incredible and we're starting to really reach out to the community as well we're starting to reach out uh, with john over out of this world minis uh, over there in the states hi john if you're watching right now hi if you're not watching it back later on cool hi in the future maybe weird um yeah been watching john's shows over there there is a link uh, to john's show just down in the description to this video go down there now oh, no not now later after the show maybe have a little look during the intermission which we'll have in an hour uh, go and check it out because he does some really good videos uh, of just anything he wants he just kind of picks up a new thing just click i'm just gonna do this that's what he does I click that's me being on the on the computer you know what i mean he just picks up a thing every now and then he just decides i'm going to paint that recently uh, i watched his video on painting um a goku figure from uh, dragon ball z absolutely incredible he's recently acquired a resin printer printed it out after learning how to use it printed it out and then painted an absolutely stunning goku it's absolutely fantastic go go and watch it it's really cool uh, we got dave lester we've got jeff lacy oi oi evening all hi guys thanks for coming along um tonight i'm gonna be doing something a little bit more different than what i for the last god knows how long i've been working on historical stuff been working on warhammer stuff and, I, and i've spoken about other projects and i really wanted to push into them so as promised uh lately i've been playing gaslands this is a fantastic game and if you haven't played it you need to go in and do a little bit of research on it you don't have to buy this big fancy hardback book which is great stafford Corsi bought it for me thanks stafford um and i play it with stafford and all my friends and and this is like an updated version of the rules called Gaslands Refueled. You're welcome. And uh, you can just get normal Gaslands for about £8 if you go on to ospreypublishing.co.uk.com. Um, yeah, go and check these guys out. The idea with it is that you really only need to buy a few things. The rules, this book if you want to, um, and then a couple of toy cards which i'm going to show you in just a moment it really is a really fun game and it's a really really minimal buy-in uh this book was retail price at about 16 pounds in the uk um and you can see you can buy the original rule set which is much much smaller for about eight pounds i recommend this it's really good so what i'm going to do today is i'm going to be painting up a car from the dystopian alternative not a future present very very cool um if you guys would like to know a little bit more about the book without kind of giving too much away and destroying the product um i will go into it um, and if you want to maybe we can do that on the easy a after party over on discord which you can find a link to just down there in the description so if you're interested in coming along to the after eight party then you should do that because it's great and i get to talk to you guys 
all together live it's fantastic please do it'll be brilliant last week uh, we just went and played video games together it was cracking leslie says my project this evening is chilling out watching this awesome show spent four hours recording music for my friend's project so i'm now feeling exhausted lol I love a lol oh yeah cool man thanks for coming along just watching supporting that means probably more to me the fact that you're just there doing your thing leslie is a musician and has recently done some recordings of music uh for himself and some other people and myself included and has been putting together some tasty little riffs to kind of uh, sh uh put on the show uh so we've been talking about what is um the sort of music that this show really kind of you know thrives on and you know what's kind of the jam for this show so you might hear in the future some music from leslie that'd be great leslie cheers mate really appreciate that thank you very much Anyway, let's uh, get away from introductions and let's just head on over to the workbench because um, I want to talk to you a little bit about um, Gaslands itself. So, um, Hot Wheels cars are what most people play with. Hot Wheels cars are an interesting scale because they're toys for children or for adults. I mean, anyone can play, right? You should do. Play. Uh, find your inner child. Um, but they're an interesting scale because they're not models and they're not to scale to each other, which um, is something you just have to get get over so that it's kind of a liberal sort of way of thinking really when it comes to this game it really is just find something and use it the idea is that you only need to really buy a few things a little bit of terrain set up your table buy um the book they got the templates to play the game for all the maneuvers in there so you can just do a quick photocopy and then you just go and buy some cars that you like and then if you want to you can kind of do them up so if for anybody who doesn't know what hot wheels is I, pretty much everybody knows what Hot Wheels is, but if you don't, it's a, a toy company. Uh, they make little toy cars at about this scale here. This is one of the more sensible looking cars that you can buy out there. This is a Porsche. This is a Porsche Panamera Turbo S E-Hybrid Sport Turismo. That's a tongue twister. <laughs> uh, but it's quite a sensible looking car. Do you see what I mean? It's just like a little family car perhaps or you know a work shuttle perhaps or something like that um for a dystopian alternative uh race game with guns and mad max isms all over it this is probably not really what you want you want something a bit more exciting but the idea is that you can play with just what you want straight out of the box or if you want to you could um you know kind of paint them up convert them do lots of cool stuff with them which is absolutely my intentions today they go really quite exotic with a lot of their things so this is somewhere between ordinary and not ordinary this is supposed to be um a customized great just a customized i think it's just someone's taken a few liberties with the design of some sort of pickups and things and made this flat bad flat bed flat bad yes very bad very flat um cat hair what would, what would the show be without a cat hair in it um I use this as a pickup um, and let you pretend that there's like a big 50 caliber gun on the back or something like that. Uh, I could convert it to put some stuff on there. I will do eventually at some point. And then they go a little bit more exotic and they go into this kind of crazy stuff here. I, I saw that. I was like, yeah, I want that. It looks quite Batmobile-y without being Batmobile-y. Um, and I use this one straight out of the box because sometimes I just want to have a cool looking car. I'm just going to play it nice and simple. And that's what I do. Um, when the first time I kind of stripped one down and painted it, it turned into this. This is uh, Plymouth Barracuda. I really liked it. It didn't have a bonnet or a hood if you're in America. Um, and has got this really big improved engine turbo thing that would stick through it if it was there. So that was cool. Um, I stripped it all down. I repainted it to make it look, you know, rusty and corroded and a bad paint job that's all kind of flaked away and it didn't take me very long and i had quite a bit of fun doing it and that's been that since then i with my 3d printer which i'm not very good at using but i did it anyway printed off this kind of basic ram thing on the front got a little bit of plastrux which is like some some i-beam girders and some poles in there made it look like the thing was really badly kind of welded and put together to have this spiky ram some cocktail sticks on there for flavor one of them's come off recently that's frustrating because that's only recently <laughs> Uh, it must be here somewhere. Doesn't matter. It's only a cocktail stick. And then my own recipe for a barbed wire, which I think so far has been undefeated in terms of its cool factor. It's the one thing that I think I've got here at Easy 8 that people haven't really cottoned onto yet. And one day I may show you how you do that. It might be really obvious to you now, showing it to you, but it's my own personal barbed wire. It's quite sharp and pointy, so do be careful. Um, 
yeah, I haven't painted the ram up yet because it was kind of an afterthought, um, but I, I will do at some point. What I've been doing is I've been playing with some other bits of you know, other cars. I've been at, I've had this little um, Volkswagen Beetle. Um, as you can see, that I've taken the bottom part off of it. That's the, probably the most laborious part is getting like a boring drill or some sort to kind of take out these pot rivets, and it goes right through the bottom of the undercarriage. You can see those little holes there. Um, you make sure you've got like, a good enough tool. Take your time. Wear protective gear. It's really quite hard um, sometimes it's quite easy but yeah basically you just want to grind the lips away it will never stay back on so you'll have to super glue it back into place but take those um, pegs out not the actual pegs sorry just the rivets you want the pegs to kind of line it all up with um, so that has left me with some other pieces it's left me with a windscreen which in some cars I might want to keep in there this is a nice little red one for coolness um, I don't know if I'm going to put it in my car today um, so I'm just going to leave that to a side over there it also comes with the furniture inside so this is the the seats and the steering wheel there's not really an awful lot in there and these aren't really high detail models or anything like that so i'm not really worried about what it looks like i'm going to put them in there because if you look in my plymouth barracuda you can see there's some bits and pieces in there there's no people sat in it who cares so um yeah i'm going to give that a quick paint job just to make it look a bit tidier and then that would slide in inside in there like that and then you can see it on the inside savvy we got it cool brilliant um what i didn't do on the plymouth barracuda was spray the undercarriage because it was just matte black anyway but today i'm gonna have a little go at that as well i'm also gonna have a go at painting the wheels which i've not done before these are very shiny uh and in retrospect i probably should have given them a little bit of a sanding just so that the paint sticks to them so i'll probably do that uh later on in the intermission if they're not done it's not so bad because they don't look bad at all as they are i would just never have black wheels never have black tires man tires ain't black um unless they've been painted up or been been cleaned up especially look pretty on you know uh, sort of a function if that's your if that's your thing go do that uh, but tires ain't black don't do it they're very very dark gray or sometimes they're very light gray um, but what I'm going to be focusing on mostly is the hull here, uh, the actual body of the car. Uh, and I'm going to do a very similar job to what I've done here. So I'm going to go for a rusty, worn effect, uh, beaten up and poorly looked after. Um, so in order to do that, I have stripped it down as best I possibly can with some sandpaper. If you are on Facebook and you've been over to the Easy 8 Facebook page, I put up a live video the other day. All of my videos generally are live. That's my shtick. Um, I tried lots of different methods of trying to remove it with as much simplicity as possible by dunking it in alcohol it didn't work <laughs> so i sanded it you don't have to get rid of every ounce of paint what you're really trying to do is take as much of it down as you possibly can so that you're not going to lose detail by going over a lot of the you know little intricate lines and things there's a lot of lines and marks and stuff on them as little uh, vents at the back over here which i really want to keep so that's what you're trying to do is prevent it from being too thick a paint job uh, and also you're you're scoring the surface so that paint can adhere to it some of my viewers have been talking to me and saying like, i haven't had any problem just painting over them i explained my reasons oh, i didn't care about that if you don't care about that cool yep that's fine absolutely do what you want paint over it that most paints will stick to it just give it a good job yeah cool right so a couple more comments going in leslie says you're most welcome dude i suppose in reference to the music it's a pleasure to make music for your show and thank you for the kind words too no worries man it was really good music it was really up my street uh leslie says uh, i've and i've had a game of gaslands it's awesome i worked out several ways to crash my car <laughs> yeah yeah there's lots of different sponsorships or teams basically and they've all got different Different sort of flavors to them uh one of my favorites is a sponsor called miyazaki and it's all about the tokyo drift scene and and frankly if you're putting weapons on those cars uh you're probably playing them wrong it's all about sweet moves and drifting around corners and you know, elegance and precision um and I'm a little bit more on that later on because that's one of my dream teams later uh i'm going to be doing this one up in my style of a team called slime which is basically a you know a call out to mad max so anything that looks um yeah, junkyardy, but not too junkyardy. You know, it shouldn't be ramshackle, but just you know, like a bunch of crazy people have been making it. So, I'm gonna prime it. Let's get on with this. Let's do this. Priming. So I'm just get our little sheet of paper. So that, let's get rid of that cat hair. You can't get away from it in this place, I tell you. I'm really sorry about the creaky chair. As I said, I, I am getting a new chair. You know, just I spent a lot of money doing the studio up, <laughs> so just trying to spread my expenditure out. 
that's even a right sentence spread my spending out you know what i mean um i've recently got the new webcam so i've got two of those i'm just trying to work out to make them work in unison it's very difficult at the moment and i'm now actually wall mounted so uh, this one doesn't sit on a tripod it's allowed my table to get closer to the wall give me a lot more space which you can't really see in this tiny little video uh, but there's a lot more space in the studio now and j just by moving the table back about six inches has actually just given me so much more freedom in here it's really quite nice i've always wanted the man cave i'm 40 i should have a man cave and i finally got it and my partner is really supportive which is lovely anyway so i've got the the famous danny's uh, cork and a stick um because to help me handle this a little bit better i just want to be able to have like a little handle so what i'm going to do here let's just put a bit of blue tack in there there's no need to glue it or anything like that i don't think um all they're saying that it might all go wrong in a minute i'm just going to push this skewer into the blue tack blob in there and as i'm doing that hopefully that blue tack is getting lots of pressure pushing down on the inside i am going to spray the inside of it black later but right now i'm just interested in getting a good prime on there so to prime airbrush a lot of airbrushing on this today uh surface primer going for gray uh, i don't want a bright white i don't have a black primer uh, i don't really use it very much but i will do at some point probably because there is a lot of use for black obviously i really want to get into a lot more zenithal work and what i've been doing for zenithal is I've been priming white and then I've been um, doing the low lights with a black paint but actually I could practice by doing two different types of primers perhaps anyway just giving this a good shake I gave my airbrush a good clean yesterday because I was planning ahead easy eight clean airbrush club it's not right Give that a good shush, give it a shake. Hopefully the airbrush is working well. I've had a little test with it a minute ago, it's all good. Pull the rule book over, just knock everything all over the place. There we go, cool. Right, I'm not gonna go crazy with an amount of primer in here and I'm gonna prime this and the undercarriage. Um, yeah, I don't really care about the most even coats or whatever because this isn't a 135th high detailed model or anything like that. It just is a, a little toy car. So yeah, try, I'm trying to just get over myself really. Here we go, got a good pressure there. Nice and gentle. Really thin layers to start with. Almost as if there's nothing going on. Now you can see there's still lots of colors on there. This was a white car as you can clearly see um, and it had lots of different colors on there especially on the sides and it had a bonnet or a hood and it had like a, a picture of a chess piece and it was called Pawn uh, actually the other card that I showed you the one that I've already painted up the Plymouth um, actually had King on it so they're part of a set uh, I suppose they were trying to do like a chess set theme um, and they were really cool and my partner was like oh you're not gonna have Pawn on it anymore and I, actually I quite like the idea that it's all painted up like a chess board and had this little um, chess figure on the front um, but you know I want it to look like my thing taking a little bit of time there just nice and gentle no need to go crazy if i go really thick now i'm just i'm setting the tone for the whole model right so there's there's no need to go thick and heavy i don't know how much longer this is going to last on the blue tack is it going to fall off <laughs> It really wants to go. <laughs> if it does, it it doesn't matter. It's just just for a little bit of ease, right? Who cares? So once again, and I'm not really sure why, I'm really struggling with my camera, probably because I've got a new camera set up and installed on here. But um, for some reason, I can't zoom. Um, or or I can zoom, and you, you get like a really sort of tight square somewhere up here in the corner of the screen um, is, is one or the other and I don't know why that is uh, it's also preventing me from doing my own focusing which I normally do so you're on autofocus that is a pain uh, so I really apologize if the quality of the camera is distressing um, I try to make it better every single time and, and recently yeah this has just happened uh, I'm in the middle of problem solving it um, if it is a problem please please do let me know because I, you know, any feedback good or bad is, is really helpful 
you might be like, no, dude, it doesn't matter. Shut up. Just get on with the painting. It's the company I come for. Or maybe you come to actually watch what I do. And you're like, no, I really want to see that. I want to know. So. Yeah, just starting to cover up. You can see it's still quite patchy. That doesn't matter, really. I'm, I'm quite happy with that. I'm going to just give it a little bit more. I'm going to give it a little bit on the inside as well. Because I'm going to do black on the inside. Just to... So, so that the outside is focused on more. It's a little bit spattery because I'm rubbish with an airbrush. Got a little bit of a blob going on down there. So I'm just going to go in with this little pointy thing. That's actually just a little bit of build up of um, old paint. So I'm going to scrape that off in a second. Oh no, no it's not. It's a hinge bolt. It's a hinge bolt thing. <laughs> it's a detail. There's a couple of little blobs going on from the airbrush, but that's okay. I don't really care about it too much. Right. Okay. Cool. I'm going to come back to you in a second. Stay there. Cool. Right. Uh, I'm going to um, give both sides of this uh, a once over with the primer, even though one side is technically the inside. If any little bit shows through, I don't want it to be kind of rubbish. So, yeah gonna paint it and then the underside as well and basically I'm just gonna go black I think uh, but I'm gonna prime it so that there's something for the paint to hold on to um, Jeff says if you need another look for your VW have a look at the film poster for the cars that ate Paris okay cool I don't know if I've ever heard of that I'll have a look it'll be interesting so a little bit of primer under here if it's going on the tires that's fine it'll probably just wipe off the tires uh, and I'm not so worried about it being really thick underneath because it's underneath, right? Actually, in Gaslands, they hooked us quite a lot of times, as Leslie will probably testify. There's a lot of times when your car will turn upside down, but, you know, that's not really the important part of the car, is it? So, what I am really interested in is getting all the side bits done, because obviously those little details are going to poke out from around the sides of the main body of the car. So, like, the bumper and the side bits. <laughs> I'm also going to give the furniture a quick go over again just for, for the paint job to adhere to but that's kind of a matte plastic anyway so I'm not really worried about it not sticking to it I'm just trying to make it a little bit easier so this little bit here so if I was to hold underneath somewhere like this it's actually quite slidey primer's really good at sticking to things and paint's really good at sticking to paint have I gone through that already? I have. Oh my god. I might need a little bit more in there. Okay, cool. There's that bit. Right. Let's get another drop or two in here. Just a little bit. Because I want to get um, some paint on the inside of the body. But before that, a sip of tea. Oh, yeah, that's a good cup of tea. I needed that. Right. Is this dry yet? No. Do you know what I was going to do that I forgot to bring up? My partner's at work and uh, I was going to go steal a hairdryer and I didn't. Damn. <laughs> Dave says, upside down or blown up? <laughs> yeah, in reference to the car flipping over. You're right. Uh, <laughs> yep. Yep. I'm actually looking at the side of the car here. This one's actually a really difficult car to sand by hand and I did a very quick job of it anyway doesn't really matter the car is all about it being um kind of scrappy anyway i attacked what i thought was a little blob down here because it was quite a bit but it turns out it's a detail um this car here was much easier because there were no real recesses to get into apart from inside the bonnet when it was absolutely fine and there inside the engine block um, but on this one as you can see like the uh, the wheel arches trying to get into in, into this area here with sandpaper was really quite difficult um so it's quite messy doesn't really matter that much right i'm now gonna pull this fella off the blue tack pull the blue tack out and now i'm just gonna hold him by the sides question mark get a little bit of primer in there wonderful and now, while he's just down there, just going to give those sides a bit of a go over. 
because it was still quite wet and tacky. My fingerprints are on the, just on the little steps on the side. Spin them around. There we go. It's like working in a real car body shop. Exactly like working in a real car body shop. Exactly. Right, the, the sides of the bit down here. Lovely. These little step things just down by the, behind the wheels. Now, when you're playing gas stands, you probably do want to glue your wheels into place. There's no need for your gas stands cars to be free rolling, unless you like that, in which case you should do that. Um, but you'll find if you're using them solely for playing gas lands that they will roll around freely over little bits of terrain and things and it really becomes quite a nuisance. Um, and if you nudge the table slightly, which let's face it always happens, cars go rolling around everywhere and you lose your position and the game's kind of ruined at that point. So um, Danny's top tip, glue your wheels in place. These ones are not, I, I will do it later on. I'm just here really to paint the car and have some fun. So let's use up the last of this primer. Get that bit in here. I think I'm out. I am out. I've got a hair in my nose. That's, that's awful. Live on screen. Oh, weird. Wonderful. Okay, cool. So let's just flush a little bit of water through the airbrush. Just clean out any old bits of paint and stuff that's in there now. And then let's have a little look at the colours that I'm going to go for because I'm going to use a special technique in a minute with shipping fluid. And I've not done that before on the show. That's a crazy cat hair going right up my nose. <laughs> ah, lovely. Right. So while that's drying in the air for a minute, um, let's have a little look at the colours that I've got. So I've got some charred brown. Charred brown is going to be the majority colour of, of the vehicle here. It's going to match very closely to this. The idea that we're trying to do is, is just basically an old rust, you know, corrosion sort of thing. And I'm going to do a little bit of bright orange on it. If you look on this bad boy here, there's a little bit of colour here and there. Ignore the white colour, that's the old colour of the car, essentially. Um, and there's, there's some little orange patches. And it's just a, basically just a little feathering of it here and there. And it just adds a little bit of... It's almost like a modulation or a blending, really. It's just to kind of... Um, just give it a little bit more something to look at. But the, the brown is going to be the, the main colour of this. Um, the white's obviously going to help make it look quite vibrant uh, and light without it being too dark, which is cool. Um, and then I'm going to get an orange, which I haven't been through my box to get just yet. So hopefully, first grab... Oh, I got one. Second grab, I've got two. Oh, look at that. Fantastic. So these are my two oranges. I will probably do a little bit of this one, or maybe this one. I use this one quite a lot for my... Um, for my uh, Skitari in 40k, so I might try this one. I can't remember which one it is that I used on here. It's actually looking quite dark. I'll do a little bit of both. Why not? Let's throw caution to the wind. And then, once I've got those rust colours on, and that won't take very long, I'm going to give a liberal spray of chipping medium. I'm only going to do that on the body of the car. So the furniture and this bit here, not going to bother. That's that's no big deal. Um, what There's lots of different ways of using this, and this is essentially what is known as the hairspray method, because hairsprays will do the same thing. Um, basically, you can apply this through your airbrush, you could apply it by brush, it is mostly designed for airbrush um, you can add water to it you don't have to add water to it you spray it on liberally or just a little bit drying time is making a massive difference there's a, there's a hundred and one different ways of getting different effects out of this some are subtle some are vast and there is no one tutorial on the internet that I can find that gives you exactly the same results it's all about personal flavor if this is an area that you want to get into be patient it takes a long time there are other products out there that do it as well. And there's this is the cheating method. Don't get hung up on the fact that you're not getting amazing results out of using this stuff. This it is for... If you're doing high detail work, you're going to be spending a week just doing chipping by doing it all by hand. Every single individual chip, if that's what you want to do. If you want to play gas hands, you want to get to it quickly, but you want to have a cool looking effect then this is exactly what it's used for. Uh, have fun with it because it's all about destroying everything you've just done to make it look really cool. So yeah, I'm going to get some brown in my airbrush. That's what I'm going to do. Charred brown. I love brown. I don't know why. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm going to have some more tea. That was really tasty. Mm -mm. 
Leslie goes on to say, I'm determined to crash my car in more inventive and exciting ways because I'm incapable of playing sensibly. And I love the, the Mad Max vibe on that car. Really into it. Cheers, man. That was really what I was after. Um, but don't, don't get me wrong. The game is not Mad Max. Uh, it does allow you for that. And especially in Gaston's Refueled, there's a lot of hat tipping to a lot of pop cultures in there. So there's a, there's a lot of death race in there. A lot of death race. There's a lot of Mad Max vibes. There's a lot of, re there's a lot of really silly stuff in there. I think it's a lot more serious. Um, and basically it's, yeah. They've got an alternative timeline, which if you stick to the end of the show, I'll pull it up in the book and I'll, I'll read it out. It's a very short alternative timeline. But the game is set pretty much modern day, but they've got teleporters and there's like another colony on Mars and Mars and Earth hate each other. Um, yeah, so it's not Mad Max, but there is Australia and that's where Team Slime comes from. And they're very Mad Maxy. And one of the things you can buy for your cars is a wall of amplifiers. So don't get me wrong. <laughs> if you want Mad Max and you want to play it, this is the game. This is the game to do it. Yeah. Okay, so I'm just going to give it a little bit of a zhuzh. On the Shaker G4017000 series. Well, now you know. Cool. Right. Let's just get the last of the water out of there. And I'm going to go for, I don't know, about five drops, maybe. One for luck. Fantastic. And I don't want to go mental with this, but I'm not really all that fussed about keeping it nice and gentle. I just want to try to not drown out all the um, details on it. Um, there's a bit of spattering that you can probably see already on there. I apologize if you can't. My camera's gone weird, but see there's some spots on there. Normally I'd be like, oh no, but at this scale and for this game, who cares? Have fun. I did have a little um, cotton bud around here somewhere, but I seem to have misplaced that. That would be really nice to clean my airbrush with. Come on, Danny. Sort it out. It's not a professional outfit at all here, you know. Seriously, where is it? There it is. I see it. Cool. Got it. Really sorry about the creaky chair. It's a really comfy chair, so that's kind of a shame. Right, eh? I love that look already, you know, <laughs> sort of thing you might find somewhere rusted out in a you know, shed near the beach, long lost and forgotten project that someone was going to do one day. I might sound like I'm being a little bit making that up, but actually where I live, that's kind of the thing. <laughs> You'll see a lot of it, actually. So I can actually, because of the um, the primer colour underneath being quite bright, I can actually give like a lot of variation in tone if I really wanted to. Uh, quite hard to see there on the on the camera, but if I just tip the light away a little bit, perhaps you can see that on the on the front of the car, much darker because I've just gone with a more intense layer there. Um, and towards the back where I haven't been ever so much, it's still quite light. So if I wanted to, I, I could actually do a bit of colour modulation just by keeping um, the paint job really soft and gentle. I'm actually going to turn the pressure down a little bit. That might help. So the inside, just to keep it nice and easy, not the furniture, just the inside of this body, I'm going to just do black, the same as what I'm probably going to do on here. And then I could just give it a light dusting with a bit of brown, just to, again, just to introduce a bit of variation into it. But no point in the couple of years I've been playing Gas Sands has anyone picked up anybody's car and got that's a really good underside. Maybe after the show, a couple of the viewers watching it, someone might pick up one of my cars and go, that's a really nice underside to your car there, Danny. <laughs> Dave, if you do it, you got to buy me a beer. <laughs> okay, I know what you're thinking. <laughs> Browns is such a nice colour. It's weird. 
I was going to do my Tyranny's brand before I decided on yellow. But my dad gave me that look of disapproval. <laughs> you know, like disappointment's so much worse, right? <laughs> cool. I'm just going to push a little bit of air through just to help expedite the drying. So just, just air, expedite the drying, speed it up. You know what I mean. <laughs> Dave, Dave, will do. <laughs> Brilliant. Uh, <laughs> what's going on here? I really want to bust this, Leslie. That would be so cool. Would help me. Wouldn't help me win, but it's a bust. Okay, if you want to take a bust, it's really good because uh, you've clearly got the points to play with something a little bit bigger. Not too big, but a little bit bigger, which means that you can fill it with more people. If you fill it with more people, you can give them shotguns or SMGs. Shot, yeah, SMGs will give you three dice each. So if you've got eight people with three dice, that's 24 bullets, 24 dice shots attacks buses are cool man if you use them in the right way but don't get me wrong it's like handling a bathtub when you're drunk there there's there's no finesse to a, to a bus uh but if you're all about killing other people if that's if that's the method throw as many bits of lead out as you possibly can bus is the way forwards uh, i took a pickup took a couple of hillbillies in the back and uh, gave them all smgs no i gave them all shotguns uh shotguns have different dice amounts depending on the range the closer you get the more you get so i just did really close drive-bys in a pickup and uh, i won which is devastating because there were some really good performance cars there Okay, what's looking at this now, what's really important for me to do is to make sure that I get the underside here because as you can see that underneath the windows there's some bits in here and there's the wheel arches as well. So maybe I won't do black on the inside, maybe I'll just do rust on the whole thing because, you know, I'm going on the inside anyway. I'm going to go quite heavier underside, do a little bit of colour modulation, I'm going to go in dark, yeah. What time are we at? Ah, oh, look at that, we're only at 20 to 8. Normally, it's like half past 8 already and I've only done like one thing. That's really why I decided to do Gaslands. <laughs> Can just rush everything. I need a bit more paint in there. Let's go crazy. Here we go. I didn't even count how many drops that was. Let's just get the paint out. get a little bit of a blob on the needle there so I'll just uh, I'll clean that away there we go now a lot of the people who I play gas hands with they all paint their cars uh, most people paint this by brush I believe uh, so you don't have to do it with airbrush oh, I just like using the airbrush and this is a great excuse to kind of um, play with really quick methods like the um, chipping technique or the hairbrush technique or things like that so um, and you can still do those with brush as well um, you know me I just like to use the airbrush wherever I can because it's kind of fun when I first got the airbrush I really wanted to kind of like replace my brush techniques with it I know I think I was just the voice of a keen person so yeah whatevs um, should I do black should I do rusty colour black I'm gonna, I'm gonna do rusty i'm gonna do black not rusty color already uh that is coming off on my finger so i'm just gonna be really careful you can see the shiny bits coming through yeah don't want to touch that um yeah i can come back to it if i need to right a bit of air let's just throw a bit of air on it and then while i'm doing that i'm gonna have a cup of tea see if i can multitask As he says, I would have loved to see the hillbillies with shotguns. Yeah, it was um, <laughs> it was really devastating. Uh, just because I rolled a lot of sixes, um, which I get blamed for a lot, but you know that's just a good fortune thing, right? It's um, 
is what I love about Gas Sands is that you can play really to your play style. There's a little bit of everything in there. Uh, there's there's a lot of diversity in the players that uh, that play with in my little group. Um, we got a tech dude who's tried stepping away from tech lately. Didn't work for him. That's fine. Uh, we get someone who just enjoys the race, but I believe is lately going to be going for military style stuff. Uh, not conventional military, just whatever's big and splody, uh, which is cool. Um, I really like the, like I say, the, the Tokyo Drift kind of scene. Um, but I also like the Mad Max stuff because I think they're two completely different things, that, you know, two different uh, flavors of, of game play style, which um, are unrelated, not too close to each other. So, yeah, it's kind of cool. I, my first love was Slime, which is the, the more Mad Max one, because when you pick up a game that looks like Mad Max, you want to play Mad Max, right? Um, but when I got into it and started to understand the complexities of the game, because it is quite a complex game, when you get into it, um, I'm like, nah, I, I like these guys too. Um, and recently in the new book, they brought out a load of new teams, and Dave Lester and myself were cruising through the rule book gas lands refueled and we're having a look at all the new teams and um yeah you can do like a uh, highway patrol they're brutal my god there's pirates and when i say pirates i don't mean like you know modern pirates i mean like literally guys with eye patches and cutlasses on a bus with a boat on the top it's a bit bonkers frankly i prefer the more serious side to being pirates you can put whatever you want into it it's really cool they've even got ghosts in it now it got a little bit weird frankly um but choose to ignore what you want right yeah i thought so took a little bit of paint off the top so i'm just gonna go back over that there cool a little bit of detail lost on the vent on the back but who cares it's a Gaslands toy. Right, okay, let's just get rid of the brown in the airbrush here. I'm going to put a little bit of water through because I should. And then I'm going to hit it with a little bit of orange, uh, just in some spaces, in places, spaces, you know what I mean? Right, not really worried about there still being a little bit of brown in there, so yeah, there's a little bit coming out, you can't really see, a little bit there, it doesn't really matter because it's all going to blend, I'm going to go with the dark orange first, doesn't really matter that it's not dry on the car either, who cares? I'm just going to let, I'm just going to go two, two drops, that's probably too much, I don't need anything more than that, I'm not even going to shake the bottle up that much, that's not, I'm not really after big bold colours here. Look at the look at the way that that's kind of blended in on the on the paper there in the background. Subtle changes of hue. A little bit here. A little bit there. If a little spatter comes out, it's going to be quite intense compared to the rest of the area around it. That is cool. In fact, that's just going to add to it. That's all I want. Cool, brilliant. Next one, light orange. And this is going to be even more sporadic and, and, and less on there now. Um, and I know it's quite difficult to see while my <laughs> camera pulses a zoom focus thing. So annoying. Two drops of this really bright orange. The first orange I used is Hot Orange by Vallejo Air. And the second orange I'm using is Orange Fire, also by Vallejo Air. Or Naranja Fuego. Or Naranja. I like the Spanish words. Cool. This is quite a, a bright orange now. Gonna try and focus on the areas where I've already sprayed orange and it's gonna go a little bit lighter. Doesn't matter if I get a little bit somewhere else. In fact, a little bit somewhere else occasionally is pretty cool. Gonna get in quite close for it. There we go. But I don't, don't want too much. I'm just trying to like catch edges here and there. Just one slightly intense patch on the top. And a little bit on the back there. Okay, cool. In fact, what I'm going to do, because I prefer the other colour, so I'm going to do a little bit more of the other one just to kind of 
again just bring a little bit of I don't know a little bit, a bit of variation in color I quite like the original one here we go giving the whole thing just a really gentle dusting so that the brown is now kind of mixed ever so slightly with the orange all over it just kind of giving a more rust vibe right I'm not trying to be Bob Ross I'm <laughs> just trying to like you know get a bit of a feeling there we go done clear right <laughs> clear clear Ew. What am I? <laughs> Searching. Click, click. Oh dear. <laughs> right. <laughs> clear the table is what I meant. Just put a bit of water through the airbrush. Ah. What's being said? Let's have a little look. Dave says, "What would be your ideal, ideal, ideal vehicles for a team?" Leslie says, "A little bit everywhere. Sorry, just went with the rhyme you did there." <laughs> Yeah, fair. I'm excited to be doing a gas hands, man. Uh, my ideal team. It's a good question, Dave. Um, cool. And I was going to talk about it, and uh, you probably stopped me from going off on a wander. Uh, my ideal vehicles. We we're talking about recently about doing a, a tournament. Me and the players who I play with, Dave is one of them. Um, and I'd like to do a Miyazaki team like the, the high performance Tokyo drift scene thing very few weapons high performance cars make it you know like it's a ballet yeah that kind of thing uh, yeah there so I want some really high performance cars we're going for about four cars in our teams um, and I've got the cards very specifically in my head that I want to use but trying to get specifics out of Hot Wheels is very difficult and it's half the fun half the challenge half of that fun is going around to the supermarket or whatever going down to your Asda or your Walmart wherever you happen to be and then just kind of rummaging through a box pretending that the toys are for a child that you don't have or for your nephew or something um, or going online and trying to find specifics I really want to hit that retro synthwave 80s vibe I want magenta colored cars I want those purples and those blues kind of coming through um, and I want them all to look really kind of throwback but modern throwback at the same time I want my favorite car in the world I'm gonna get a lot of hats I hassle over this a Porsche 911 um, and it has to be the 1982 one okay because it's just a beautiful stunning car I don't care about the Porsche 911 Carrera it has to have the spoiler on the back so take that Carrera and throw it out the window problem is the 911 that old model with the rounded headlights that face forwards rather than like the modern boxed versions is really hard to get hold of I found them for £115 on eBay. That is unacceptable. <laughs> I found a couple of versions out there that I could be happy with. You know, but I don't want to spend too much for them because they're Hot Wheels cars. You can pick them up from the shops for a pound or two, all right? So I found, I found a Porsche 911 on eBay. But if anyone knows of one, I'll pay up to a fiver for it. If you know it's out there, show me. I'll have it. Thanks very much. I also want a Ferrari Testarossa. Again, it's got to be an 80s model. Uh, they're very similar all the way through since they've been made, actually, Ferrari Testarossas. Uh, but there is a big difference between modern ones and older ones. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I say a modern. I don't know how modern Testarossa is, but I do know that it was made beyond the 80s. Um, and there isn't an awful lot of uh, difference between them. But, yeah, I want something that, that kind of echoes my upbringing. Uh, and I would like there also to be uh, a DeLorean because I... I think that screams 80s um, and then there's a little bit of um, open territory really uh, I wouldn't mind the car from Knight Rider kit it is actually a real car I just can't remember what it is off the top of my head now challenge myself um, or 
Um, well, it's probably real, like some sort of Lamborghini, uh, because obviously the DeLorean's going to have the, the gull um, doors that kind of open out sideways, and Lamborghinis tend to have those doors that kind of slide upwards, certainly on like a rotating arm, that'd be really cool. Um, and I just kind of want all of those sort of designs and schemes and things in my Tokyo Drift. If I can't get those cars in a decent enough time and paint them up to make them look cool for a tournament that we haven't set a time for, but we want to do it soon, um, then I'll be quite happy for some big bulky looking saloon cars um, that will be really good to, yeah, if they, especially if they've got like blues and twos on top, to turn them into um, really intimidating looking um, highway patrol uh, because they're bonkers. I really like them. I want to stay away from slime for the tournament because I play slime a lot. So I want to kind of um, push out into something that I haven't done a lot of. I've played a lot of Miyazaki, but I haven't really played teams of them before. And I think it'd be really nice to see them in in action. So yeah, if you can find a decent 1982 Porsche 911 from Hot Wheels or Matchbox, 164th scale, it, might, it can be freely printed, you know, as long as it's respectable quality and a reasonable price. Let me know that I need your help. Cool. Right. That is my rust colour done. So what I'm going to do now... Yeah, I'm just going to let that dry for a second. I have blasted it with air, so that's fine. I'm just going to let it just settle for a minute. I've got some chipping fluid. I'm shaking it. I don't really know why I'm doing that. There's no pigment in there. It is a fluid. Drop it in the airbrush and let it go on. When it goes on, it's going to spatter. There's no way about it. It's going to go on lots of blobs. That is normal. That is what you want. You need that. That's fine. It won't affect your ultimate paint job. Doesn't matter if it does because the idea is that you remove your paint job. And then I'm going to paint it British Racing Green, which I've got not British Racing Green, but I've just got dark green here. Yeah. So, um, and then I'm just going to scrub that off because I think that it would suit the car. The, the main colour on it is going to be what you see there. That's going to be flecks of this. What I am thinking about doing is doing a separate layer underneath and I'm hitting it with um, es Escorpina Green or Verde Escorpina. Um, it's like an undercoat colour. I didn't do that with the original one because it was a cream white anyway. It didn't really make an awful lot of sense. I didn't really think about it. But when you're doing chipping techniques the long way, you do your main colour and then you do little bits of a lighter colour around like an undercoat. I don't know if it will work and I don't really want to test it out. So what does the community say? Should I do just a dark green or should I do just a light green or should I do a combination of the two or should I find a mid green and just do the mid green instead? What do you think? Let me know. I've got a little bit of time to let this bad boy dry. Um, cool. Dave Lester says, I have a DeLorean you can have. Oh, cheers, mate. That'd be brilliant. Yeah, cool. Uh, Jeff says, black CIA GMC pickups like in the films. You know, you're absolutely right. And I, I kind of wanted that actually in my Miyazaki team. Unfortunately, because they're all about a finesse, they can't have pickups or big vehicles like that. So that's out the window. But for the highway patrol absolutely stick some you know blue lights on the top or blue and red lights on the top and paint it black and white and make it look intimidating yes please that'll sound cool um but they're insane man they're insane um yeah just gonna let this bad boy dry uh for a little bit and while i'm in the intermission which we should probably go to uh now all i'm really gonna do is just try to focus on getting the undercarriage um on this car done because yeah it just needs a bit of prep and i'm just gonna spray it black so that's what that's what i'm gonna do during the intermission while you're in the intermission you guys dave says dark green all right cool cheers and uh, what you guys should do is go change your point paint water i can't talk hi my name's danny and i have a problem talking see you in 10 go change paint water bye
Welcome back. Hope you had a good intermission. I did. It was great. I just did a lot of cleaning. Hope you guys are having a great evening. I'd love to know about your projects. If you are doing something this evening, uh, let me know what it is you're up to. And let us know if you need any help or if you just kind of want to have a little bit of a shout out and talk about it. That's what we're here for. I'm having an awesome time painting this little car. I'm really, really pushing myself to get as much of it done as possible tonight with the actual hope of kind of having it all pre-assembled and put together and pretty much done. I'm not going to do any kind of oh, excuse, I've got the hiccups I haven't even had any food <laughs> I'm not gonna like do loads of accessories like I've done with the other car like you know like I've got a mesh screen in there I've got like a ram on the front I've got spikes and barbed wire I just want to do the paint job and kind of get it done just so it looks kind of cool um just because I want to be able to finish something in, in one show because I've never done that before and I think it'd be great so without further ado let's get on over to the workbench um, where I have cleaned up a little bit over here because because it's metal because the paint doesn't want to stick to metal so easily it's very easy to take it off your fingers and whatever one of the reasons why you should sand it down a little bit um, <laughs> I'm getting bombarded with messages from viewers about <laughs> like links to images and whatever I, I'll check at them at the end of the show I'll talk about them over at Discord um, <laughs> thanks very much. Keep them coming. Keep them coming. I want that inspiration. Is what it's all about. Um, yeah, basically the paper that I was using because it's got a lot of paint on it from previous paint jobs. Um, the texture of that paint, though not thick, was raspy and was taking the paintwork off. So I've got a fresh piece of paper, ish, fresh ish. I'm really sorry if it's blinding. Do let me know if you can't see. It's too bright. The contrast gets affected. If I bring my hands here, you can see that like the contrast kind of changes, uh, which is why I don't always change to a fresh piece of paper because my lights kill it but if it's okay that's cool Kess has joined hi Kess think I would have to start again on my Hot Wheels cars it's gone all wrong I'm really sorry to hear that um, there is an easy way of doing that of course just stick them in some alcohol isopropyl alcohol I've got right here um, uh, a big like sort of like a dry food container so it's got a good seal on the top and that isn't water in there that's alcohol pure um, isopropyl 99.9% alcohol um, and the best thing is it's also really good to cut yourself not the stuff that you've been using to strip your models down. Literally, leave your cars in there half an hour and then get a, an old toothbrush and they will come up brand new. Um, so yeah, do that. That'll get you down to your baseline quicker, but then of course you do have to do your paint job over the top. Sorry, man, that's the way it goes sometimes, isn't it? That's why I like to do one at a time rather than like a whole batch. Sorry, dude. Yeah, it sucks. A moment of silence. Cool, moving on. So, chipping medium, very excited about this. Just give my airbrush a bit of a quick clean out. It's flowing good. Okay, cool. So, I can't remember how much I used to normally stick on these things, but what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put in like uh, five or six drops. I know that I go through it quickly. So, one, two, three, four, five. Let's do five. Um, yeah, and then I'm just going to spray it all over. I'm going to be quite quick with it. I'm going to be quite liberal with it. So... Here we go. I don't know if you guys can see that, but it is going on quite spattered. Yeah, it looks like you're ruining everything. Now, my airbrush, we know, isn't the best quality airbrush because I've, it is a really good brand, but I've not probably looked after it so well. So this might look like a result of me not doing a good enough job with it. I'm just fine. Can I get some light in here? <laughs> No, you can't really see it very well. I really apologise. Um, but yeah, it looks awful, basically. Um, I'm not going to go mental. That's probably enough. Um, but yeah, I remember the first time spraying and going like, what have I done? This is awful. I can't use this stuff at all. Y you can, trust me. It's 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 fine. Um, I'm just going to flush that through with a bit of water because I don't want the rest in there. I am getting some bubbles coming back up inside the hopper, so it might be a, a little bit of a blockage in there. It's like a viscous... Um, medium basically so it, it's not like a gel but it has that sort of quality to it just flush that through what I don't want is there to be any chipping medium in any future paint going on to here so <laughs> Jeff says uh, I was me sending a link to the government GMC with a minigun <laughs> wasn't just you but yeah you were one of them thanks <laughs> yeah I can see who it is when they send them there's a little bit of foam coming out the airbrush there. Just going to get a bit more water in there. I'm going to chuck a little bit of cleaning fluid in there too. And then flush all that through with a bit more water. I'm going to go in with some 50-50 water cleaner mix. 
just because while that's drying now, I could spray right over the top of it, it doesn't really matter, but I say that there are different effects with different drying times and quantities. It's it's a very I don't know if it's an unexplored science, but I think it's a very unprecise science. Um so yeah. Weird one. Have fun with it though. I just want it to dry a little bit. It does take a little wet to dry. So it's a good opportunity for me to clean the airbrush out. Come on. I think there is a little bit of dried gunk in there, so let's just take the the nib off. And I'll just give it a quick clean with a little cotton bud. Let's take the nozzle out there. There's a little bit of dried paint in there, that's fine. That's gonna happen. That's pretty clean. Got a little cleaning brush here. So these are really good for picking up cat hair. <laughs> a little bit of yucky paint just came out there. So what did you do, Kez, to your um, to your Gaslands teams to make, that's made them ruined? Interested to know. Did you go too far with the technique? Did you repaint them and, and ruin it? Or have you dropped them? Or has the dog at them? Or did you leave them outside? Did you put them on boil too long? I don't know. I can feel your pain though. That's what this show is all about. It's a little bit of solidarity. Come on to the group, have a cry. Come on to the Discord. Easy gate, after party, after the show. Come in virtually, have a shoulder to cry on. Let's talk about it. Let's see if we can get your team back up and running. There's nothing worse than having just completed something as well, is there? I've just finished it, man, and then... And then you do something and you ruin it. You're like, why? My God. There we go. Cool. Airbrush is working again. Wicked. Right, let's, I'm going to throw a little bit of air on here. Shipping medium does take a little bit longer to dry. And you could speed this up, of course, with a hairdryer. If you'd remembered in the intermission to go downstairs and steal your partner's hair hairdryer. Um, so, yeah, I'm doing well tonight. Like I say, I would like to have one. Um, just like kind of hanging off the side of the bench here, which I could just... But I don't want it to be like, you know, workshoppy. So, um, well, I don't mind it getting workshoppy. But I wouldn't want my partners on to go all workshop. You know what I mean? Just kind of with bits of paint or whatever on it. I'm very clean in the workshop. Not necessarily tidy, but I'm very clean. Um, but there's sometimes there's no help in it. And I don't want to ruin my partner's stuff. Because that's not what it's for, right? Studio stuff stays in the studio. Um, so, yeah, I'd like to get myself a little one. But trying to find a little hairdryer there. It's all about big hairdryers. Anyway. Um, Kez says, I tried a new method with staining. It did not work for me. They look awful. Do you know what? I'd really appreciate uh, a photo, if you wouldn't mind, just so I can see it as like a cautionary tale or just to share in your pain a little bit. If you could stick that up on the Facebook page, because Easy 8's on Facebook too! That's a, that, was, that was a really shameful like advertising plug. I'm really sorry. Sorry. <laughs> but we are on Facebook, so guess, yeah, stick up on Facebook or on Discord, whichever. Uh, both, if you want. Um, yeah, I'd love to see it. Oh, yeah, I can feel you hurting. Did you do all of them at the same time as well? It says, uh, did the wash over a, over a varnish? It did not work like it did in the video I watched. Oh yeah, a new technique. Did you do, oh, I'm just trying to think. If you did, if you varnished with like a, an acrylic varnish and you went over with an enamel wash stain you can remove it with spirit be gentle and the spirit won't go through the acrylic spirits and acrylics do not mix they don't affect each other if you've done an acrylic wash over it yeah sorry that's that's that 
unless you've got like a, a spirit based varnish over the top, in which case you're absolutely fine. Um, but no, to be fair, if you, if there's an acrylic stain, you're probably stuffed. Um, but yeah, if it's, um, if you've got, like if you did like an enamel stain or an oil based stain, you can take that off with no fear of what's going to happen underneath. Just be gentle because the brush will be abrasive. So yeah, if you, for example, if you've been and used something like streaking grime, this is an enamel based thing, reacts with spirit, does not react with water. So if you've done like a, an acrylic varnish and used an enamel or an oil based thing, go crazy with the, uh, with the white spirit, it will come off. Right, okay, cool. I'm gonna get some colors on here. So, um, I put it to the group. I said, well, should I do a dark green or a light green? Or should I do a mixture of the two? And everybody went, do a light green. I'm like, okay, cool. You guys are gonna go against the grain. So what I did is I went and got a couple of other greens. So, uh, I've got um, a goblin green and I've got a sick green. And you can see that there's a little bit of difference here. This is a little bit more olivey, ever so slightly. This is a little bit more leafy, but they're brighter than the dark green, but they're a mid-tone compared to the other one. Uh, so very, very quickly, before we lose too much time here, what do you think? Should I go dark, light, or should I go with one of these two? Leafy or olivey? Kez says, oh well, I'll give it a try. Nothing to lose. I'm really sorry, man. I'm really sorry, but I hope it all works out. Um, and Leslie says, I'm really sorry to hear that, Kirsten. Yeah, man. Yeah. Hey. It's a learning curve, right? You've learned something. It didn't turn out well, but that's a lesson, right? Don't don't be upset about about um, the lesson. I am getting ready to go over with a um, color here, uh, just to kind of give you a heads up. What I did during the intermission, I painted the undercarriage black. I gave it just a heavy coat. I went crazy for it. If I'm touching it, it's coming off. So I'm just trying to be really, really careful with it. Just leaving it over there for the moment. Later on, I'm going to come in with a varnish, and I'll make sure I varnish that as well. That should protect it and then I went over with a leather color on the inside and I was really heavy I didn't hold back I got in there close just wanted saturation of color I don't care about it whatever that's brilliant fantastic uh, Leslie says sick green because it's sick Sick. <laughs> Dave says leaf green I'm gonna go with Dave in leaf green because at least I'm hitting both of you with the kind of the mid-tones neither of the ones I chose initially which is cool um, but I'm gonna go with Dave over Leslie because I don't like it when people say sick bruv because that's a very UK thing if you don't live in the UK I'm so sorry <laughs> So, I'm gonna go goblin green that's right yeah I said that sick bruv I work with a lot of kids around that age I hear it a lot <laughs> so okay here we go I'm gonna go with about six drops of this because I want good coverage one two three four five actually I'm just gonna do five I'm just gonna hold back a little bit easy easy so uh, nice and gentle I'm gonna go in with some layered and controlled um coverage and i want it to be green i want it to look like the car was this color and then what i'm going to do is add a neat little trick in a minute and i'm going to agitate this layer of paint um with water and a brush i've got my clean water i did that before the show brilliant don't know what i've done with it though I see it, I see it. <laughs> Told you, it's not tidy. Um, and then the chipping medium is going to um, bring, you know, it's basically going to lift the paint off. So as I agitate the paint with a brush, it's going to lift it away. Um, and it's all about how heavy or light I go. <laughs> Leslie says, <laughs> that's okay, sick bruv, in it. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever. Actually, this is a really nice color. I, quite, I like this. This is cool. This is a good color. I love green. Just going to hit it with a bit of air because we've got so many layers of paint on there now. It's getting quite thick. I don't want it to be. I don't want it to lose too much definition. There's not a lot of definition. It's a tin toy car, man. It's like little pewter thing. Um, but because there's not a lot on there, it's very easy to lose what is there. And I still want it to have those little bits of definition because I'm a model maker and I'm a perfectionist. You know, I said at the beginning of the show, this isn't a tutorial channel, but I feel like I'm actually doing a lot of tutorial stuff today. Maybe maybe I'm getting to that point where I can do tutorial stuff. I'm actually got a bit, bit more green in there. What do you guys think? Am I, a bit, am I a bit more tutorial? Is it worth doing tutorials? There's people out there, man. They do tutorials. Do I need to do it? Uh, 
you let me know. I can see um, a little bit of reaction on the front of it here. You probably can't see that on the camera there because it's all rubbish with the light balance at the moment, but um, it looks like it's kind of mixing badly like there's an like 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 water and oil mixing that's fine that's the chipping medium i've been quite heavy with it um yeah it's okay look at that that's a cool color man i really like this a bit more fresh air here we go if i had a hair dryer this would be so much quicker so chipping medium basically um stops the paint from bonding to the surface so well and the longer you leave it the more it's going to dry and allow the paint to bond a bit more so it's going to have a little bit more um is it going to fight for it a little bit more the wetter it is the easier it's going to be to lift the paint off acrylic is a plastic i'm going to say obviously but that might not be obvious to some people so um basically plastic creates i believe the right term is homogeneous layer so it basically becomes a layer a solid in its own right it it heals and it solidifies and it basically forms a sheet in the form that you have painted over the model stay with me here um once i start letting this paint dry a little bit um, i'm going to agitate it it's going to break that surface um, and it's going to split the layer, the sheet of paint, and it's going to come away as I do that. Um, because it dries in a sheet, it's quite easy to take off large surface areas. If you want to do smaller chips and whatever, um, there are lots of different techniques and things that you can learn to kind of get smaller chips. You can actually get different types of chipping medium to give you big chips, little chips. Mine's like a catch or somewhere in the middle. Um, yeah, but you can get large chips, small chip stuff, and, and and it helps break the paint up in different ways. Um, so this is probably going to go quite crazy. There's not a lot left of the original colour white on this car. That's fine. That's what I wanted. That is okay. I'm going to try and go a little bit less this time. So what I'm going to do is I'm not going to give the paint so much time to dry. I, I want it dry, but if I left it overnight, it would be much drier than it would be in like five minutes because even though paint is dry to the touch within a few minutes it's not completely um, cured that is um, very much the same for um, like enamels and oil based paints as well um, if enamels and oils have cured overnight for 24 hours they are pretty much impervious um, to even spirit cleaners um, so consider this thing. This is a really nice sort of pea green colour going on here. I'm really into this. This is a good choice. I'm glad as a community we managed to reach this as a colour. I'd actually like to see a car just done it like this. This would be great. I think I'm at the end of my colour and I'm just spraying nothing but it's very hard to hear anything through my headphones. So, just a bit of fresh air, just all over it. There we go, cool. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to get a, a brush, not too stiff, but I don't want it incredibly soft. Um, and I want some clean water. Got some clean water, here we go. And I'm going to have, what brush shall I use? I'm going to go for this one. I've got a good dry brush here. That's a pretty good one. Let's, let's start... No, I'm not going to start soft. I'm going to go with my dry brush because it is quite a soft dry brush. It's not a really coarse one. Um, and I'm basically going to stab at it and wipe it around. And I'm going to use a mixture of brushes perhaps as well. So uh, I'm going to go in with some water here. I'm going to have a tissue just on the side. I've got a fresh kitchen roll tissue here. Just in case I start oversaturating my brush, I want something to be able to take it off on. Wicked. There we go. Oops, hello. <laughs> my table was ever so slightly leaning down imperceptibly so but if i leave my brushes on the table they roll away uh, so yeah that's need a bit of adjustment on the table feet okay cool so not an oversaturated brush but pretty darn well damp and i'm going to start on the bonnet because it's a good place as any to start right so all i'm going to do is just start agitating and agitating um, and it's probably going to embarrass me in front of everybody ah there we go i wonder if you can see that starting to bring the light in you might be able to see some speckling on the front just over here. Here we go. I'm going to... A bit more water, actually. going to be quite damp. And I'm going to... There we go. See how that's starting to come through? So, nice and gentle. I, at this point, I don't want to oversaturate. I'm actually going to just take a bit of that water away. 
and just touching at the tissue they're pulled off even more and it's going to bundle up it's going to bunch up you're going to get deposits of it in places that's fine do that because that's what corroding paint jobs do and i'm just going to really take my time i want lots lots of little scuffs that all kind of blend together rather than taking massive chunks like the other one did and take my time I've actually got quite a saturated brush I'm doing like one big slow push maybe just like a little wiggle when I put the bristles down there we go look at that that is awesome If I was to drag the wet brush, I'd take off swathes of it. Yes. Okay. Across the top now. I've got quite a heavy orange deposit on the top there, remember? So this will be a really good place to get quite a... Quite a bare bit looking. Bare bit looking. Yeah, I'm talking well good English tonight. Look at that. That's really cool. Leslie says you can definitely do tutorials. You've got the skill and knowledge, but yeah, you you need to do it. But do you need to do it? That's the question. Yeah, you're right. Uh, thanks. Um, and it's one I honestly don't think I can answer for you. Oh, cheers, man. Thanks for the honesty. That's really cool. Um, cheers. I mean, I don't necessarily have to do like a separate thing for tutorials, but perhaps I can bring a bit more of a, a tutorial element to the to the show. Maybe I don't know. get a lot of people asking me um people who aren't actually viewers going like is it a tutorial um no it's not really uh, it can be if you want it to be in some places it's actually quite hard to remove it like it's not as, as reactive as it was in some areas because the chipping fluid wasn't that um wasn't that concentrated in, in other places so it, a little bit more aggression Leslie says that is looking stunning thank you <laughs> it's really simple so it's really not down to me this is this is all just airbrush and chipping fluid man but it's so simple and it's so fun getting quite a bit of froth coming out there that is just paint and chipping medium mixed with water so just clean the brush out it's a bit easier to see some places that I want a bit quite a bit more corrosion so like I've got some patches here and there so maybe on the door here I'm gonna go quite heavy actually quite difficult to remove it there And gently don't want to remove too much of my fingertips so it's just a gentle turn around there down the back <clears throat> I think what I want is quite a bit of wear and tear along like a lot of the leading edges maybe I let the paint dry too much it's actually not very green on the sides down here so um, like I didn't do enough, like a good enough paint layer so I might just see if I can remove quite a bit of the paint that's there so it just goes down to the down to the sort of the brown colours. That was that's just me being not a very clear painter. This is a bit of a tongue pokey out moment here, just trying to really concentrate on some smaller, tighter areas without really overly affecting the rest. I want the colour the green to, to really be quite, not overly dominant, but yeah, you know what I mean. I don't want to go too far. It's quite a temptation just to go Aah! all over it. <laughs> Jeff says, very clever, thanks. <laughs> it's cool, isn't it? 
I say there's no skill to it. There is quite a skill to it. Um, I've nowhere near perfected it at all. Um, it's all about, you know, how much and drying times and, you know, then how much of this you give it. But, yeah, it it's certainly quite good fun. I reckon a bit more on top of there we go that's quite cool look at, look at that that's brilliant brilliant it's right a soft brush just over it just see what that does right if anything gonna wipe a lot of the the water away which is making it quite hard to see what's going on yeah I wish I put a bit more um, green on the side of the doors there but do you know what it's fine Okay, cool, right, wash my brushes out. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to dry it with some air and then I'm going to hit it with a varnish because that chipping medium will always be active to some degree and the only way to really stop that is by giving it a varnish. So, just some air. Just some air. And I'm going to varnish everything now because I want it to be protective. Protected. <clears throat> and I really like the satin varnish I've been enjoying that lately so I think I'm going to give it a satin varnish normally I go matte and if I don't like it I can always go over it with another sheen right? if, I, if I actually, do you know what, I prefer a matte or a gloss I can do that if I want to but actually I kind of want the, the rust to be very matte so I don't think I'm going to go anywhere near a gloss There's a lot of like patina now on there that the um, the chipping medium is kind of reacted with the paint and to a degree it's even reacted with like the um, the brown underneath. That's absolutely fine because rust becomes highly textured the longer it's been sat there. So that's cool. Let's move them off the water there because damn, that's a lot of water. It's looking really cool. I love it. Just look at it, man. Bring the lights in, Danny. Sweet. What time are we at? Half past. Let's get this show kicking. Right. My chair creaking away in the background. I'm so sorry. It's so unprofessional. Right, let's just put a big blob of satin varnish in there because I'm going to go over everything with it. Okay. Bit of a dirty nozzle. clean I think with the chipping medium to kind of get that real sort of rough look like this is less is more not necessarily with applying the chipping medium but with the effect of you're know, kind of working away with um, uh, like a like, like the brush kind of method don't there's no need to go crazy I think I probably went too far with that with the original one the the Plymouth um, so yeah bear that in mind 
leave a bit of color on there. There's also a really dodgy comment appeared in the live chat from a really dodgy link uh, from a, you know, like a um, profile. Uh, don't click it. Um, yeah. It's the second time this happens, but whatevs. Welcome to the show, Gazia Tavisk. Come along and watch. Don't put dodgy links in there. Come and join in. Right, I'm gonna do the inside as well because uh, I want it to be. Oh, look at that! You can see like the metal shining through. So there's a little bit of um, work to do later. It kind of like get up, up, I'll just go over that with bits of black or brown or something by by brush probably. But lock it all in with a little bit of varnish. There we go. And I'm just gonna leave that just gently, gently there. Okay, uh, inside the car. Um, Semi shiny leatherette, perhaps. <laughs> and I've uh, got a car bottom here. So, again, I'm being quite liberal. I'm gonna go down the sides. Just a very liberal coating to help protect it. Brilliant, cool. Gonna come back to here. I'm just gonna apply a little bit of air. And I'm hoping that it's just, yeah, gonna give it a protective layer. Oh, I had a bit of a, a skip there, a bit of a jump. I wonder if anybody else saw that. Or was that just my laptop? Like everything kind of very quickly froze. Like a scratch in the record. Went quite heavy with the varnish on the inside there, just to get it in there. Um, so yeah, there's quite a lot of drying to do there. And, and now on the outside, I'm just going to give it one more quick go because I can see that I've actually gone through to the metal just a little bit here. Very hard to see, um, so it's quite easy. And I'll probably do that with a brush, but just to make sure that it's all protected, just one more go. And there, there, yeah, I can see like just a couple of bits. This is one of the problems of doing these these toys is because they are metal. Um, it's very easy to rub bits off of them. And I am rushing this because I want to get it done in the show. Um, so yeah, normally I'll take my time a little bit. I'll probably do it over a day or two. Um, but it just goes to show that you can do it. And I think that a semi-gloss was definitely the way forward because it looks really cool, man. Again, just going to give it a bit of air, and then I'm just going to uh, ditch whatever varnish I've got left in my airbrush, and then I'm going to go for a bit of a weathering technique. Oh my god, I know! And then we're going to put the whole kit together, and then I'm going to show off at the end of the show. It's going to be amazing. So. If you are new to Gaslands or you haven't played so much, what would you do? What style would you do? Would you go with something really elite, cool, sleek, futuristic, glossy black with blue lights on? Or would you go something really round shackle, rusty? Or would you like to do something just really weird and bizarre? Do you like the Mad Max vibes? Do you like the post-apocalyptic vibes? You can ask that question even if you're not new. Maybe you've got an idea because you've played the game loads. What's your favourite style? And if you were to do something different, what would you venture into? This is a conversation that Dave and I were having the other day. One of my favourites, just in concept alone, is a sponsor team called Warden. And the idea is that they are a prison... Um, and if you want to, you can seek redemption um, by applying to go on the game show because Gaslands is a game show. Um, futuristic, dystopian, 
um, game show that people watch because it's fun in a desolate future. It's not even a future, it's just an alternative present. Anyway, um, basically, they get a load of inmates and they say, if you win, if you come first, if you perhaps win the, the series or whatever, you uh, get to win your freedom. And apparently in the story, there's only one person that ever did. Uh, and basically what they do is they get a load of inmates, they stick them in a car or in a big pickup or, you know, a big um, big van or a Bronco or whatever. And then they weld them shut so they can't ever get out unless they win. <laughs> and in the original book, it actually says, um, like, you know, with promises of freedom if they win. And then it alludes to the fact that maybe even if they do they don't uh, but in the new rule book there one of the sponsors is a guy who won his freedom the only one who ever has apparently maybe someone has maybe not but yeah i like the idea of just having a load of inmates who got who have who've said like yeah actually this this is good for me <laughs> i'm gonna do this cool right so i have done the varnishing we're, we're almost done this is so exciting. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to use my streaking grime. Yay, streaking grime. And I'm just going to not apply it liberally, um, but I'm, I'm going to apply it liberally. <laughs> and then I'm going to just like remove it from areas that I don't want it with a little bit of spirit um, or uh, thinner, you know. Make sure I get in this good shake. Leslie says, oh, definitely weird and bizarre. I think I would try to conjure up a paint scheme that perfectly resembles vomit, but then that's just because it would amuse me. Yeah, man, do it, do it. Do it. Resembles vomit. You got problems. Uh, if you're interested, go to greenstuffworld.com because they've got a blood effect paint and a vomit effect paint. So yeah, there's that. <laughs> you're a wrong un. <laughs> okay, cool. So um, I don't really know what I'm going to do here. So I'm just going to get. Um, uh, a brush and then I'm just gonna run it heavily from the top down the sides and let it kind of run away with itself really just gonna have some fun I could put it through the airbrush can't be bothered I've used the airbrush a lot today I want to go and use this brush okay so um, I'm not gonna worry about putting down a layer of thinner first Just heavy on the top, like that. I didn't do this with the other car. This is a new thing that I thought of just earlier on. Um, when I was at work thinking, what can I do to make it look a little bit grimier and a little bit more detailed? I thought, you know what? What I normally do, and that's put um, streaking grime on it. So I'm gonna need a little bit of thinner. When I say a little bit, quite a bit, I reckon. So where's my pipette? My pipette, where are you? Here it is. Thinner. Pipette. Let's suck some of that up and stick it in here. Actually, I'll put it in there. That's my pie dish. Right, pop that over here. I just realised I've got a cup of tea that I haven't drunk anything from for a while, so let's have some of that. It's going to be cold. Mmm. Leslie says, cheers, dude. I'll oh, check that out. No, seriously, Green Stuff World are excellent when it comes to, like, cool and weird and different paints. They've got so many candy inks and things like that. And like I was saying, for my um, Miyazaki team, um, like, I want to do those kind of really... Uh, like retro synthwave things, vibes, and I'm going to get some white ink, and I'm going to get magenta and blues, and I'm just going to let it run away with itself. It's going to be amazing. And Green Stuff World do some really cool um, products for that. Like their their inks and yeah, it's brilliant. I'm going quite crazy with the streaking grime here, and I probably shouldn't have. <laughs> that is the ultimate story here so where's my tissue tissue let's absorb a lot of that there um, I pick a lot of this up with my brush because the idea of course is to get thinner on it and then lightly not thinner like get the streaking grime on it and then lightly go over and make your streaks and things but what I suppose I am doing is I'm getting a lot of grime color into the recesses and things not that there's an awful lot on here. 
but it has added to the overall effect and that is cool man that will evaporate quite quickly but because I like to speed things up coming in with some air oh that's actually blown it all away okay do you know what let's um let's try that up and start again it's okay to make mistakes I suppose at least it has a thinner base now right okay uh, let's go back to streaking grime I just hold it on with my fingers there. There we go. Now I can put this color over quite liberally. It's like I've forgotten how to use streaking grain. Okay. I will clean my brush out here. And I have a little bit of thinner left in it, all right? And then, then I do streaky things with it. Streaky things. Let's use my good streaky brush. These are my streaky brushes over here, aren't they? Flat ones, yeah. Um, that I was using this brush quite well on the tank the other day, but it's a very high detail tank. Um, so I'm just gonna go in lightly with this one. So, uh, while I've got streaking grime on it, I'm just gonna, a little bit of air to help dry it up because I put it on quite liberally, it's quite heavy. With 15 minutes left to go, I really want to get this last effect done because that's pretty much the car done, right? I could just leave it here and not have to worry about it. Put it together, take a picture of it. It's done. I'll paint the tyres like a, a dark, dark grey. And then I'll glue it together. And then I'll give it one more varnish. And then it will look awesome. And then I'll put a picture on Facebook and I'll stick it on Instagram because I haven't been on there for ages. Did you know that Easy 8 Online Painting Club is on Instagram? Go and have a look because it's on there. Do it. Another shameless plug. Soz. Leslie says, streaking things, streaky things, streaky things. I suppose you like the streaking grind, man. Again, it's another fantastic product that though is a bit of an elite product really in my mind it's um it's a it's another you can use it as a cheap you know so i've got a little bit of thinner in here and now i'm going to just do streaks I don't know if this is working as well as I wanted it to. Maybe this is something where I've got to spend a little bit of time doing it. So I'm going to try and clean it up a little bit, really. Just so that the colour comes through. That colour green, we want that to be really quite a prominent colour. Um, and at the moment, it just looks really dirty. So I'm just going to just brush, brush, brush until it's kind of almost all gone, leaving the streaking grime in like the recesses and things like that. This is a bit of an experiment. And I'm okay with that. That's looking pretty cool. We've lost a little bit of the, the sort of a rust effect underneath, like all the oranges and things. So I'm going to spend a bit of time just with a little bit thinner on the top there, just trying to work that away. So that they, those colours kind of come through a bit more. There we go, that's a bit better. And, um,. Yeah, just work that away. I want the, the streaking grime to be a bit more subtle. And it, and it is now, I'm, I'm working on it. Down the doors there, look at that, that's, that's cool, let's get rid of that. 
So if I use this brush here, that's better. Um, and I'm going to go in with some rust effects in a minute, in the same sort of way, but applying it not so liberally. <laughs> it's looking really black on the screen, I get that, I'm really sorry. <laughs> Okay, do you know what? Let's just uh, let's just dry that up. Bit of air, and I'm going to come in with some rust effects. Let's get off my fingers as well. I could do dust effects on it if I wanted to. I could do all sorts, couldn't I? I could go really crazy with it, but I don't want to. This is just playing, having fun thing. This isn't even for a team that I'm making. It will go into my slime collection. Okay, cool, right. Let's get some rust effects out. So I've got rust streaks. These should be just a little bit lighter than the um, one I've just been using. And then I've got some like really bright rust, which I'm just gonna do some spotting with basically. <laughs> Leslie says, now I like that. Nicely done, dude. Thank you very much. Here we go. Oh, I haven't opened this one for a while. Come on. Ugh. I'm so strong. I really am. I'm not. Okay. Creaky chair in the background. Do you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to wash this brush out. There we go. Oh, throw that everywhere. That's not what I want. This is a very rusty colour. Excellent. Trying to concentrate it more in the sort of browner areas. Don't move that out of the way. I am really rushing now. <laughs> okay, a little bit of air. Don't want to blow it around, I just want it to dry quicker. Dry quicker. So I'm doing it from quite a distance. It's drying, it's drying. We're gonna be a little bit over. If you wanna see this through to the end, that's fine. Um, just, yeah, because I wanna finish it, man. It's gonna look awesome, right? So I'll, I'll, I'll be a couple of minutes over. Of course, you don't have to stick around. You don't have to, if you want to, that's cool. But you know, we've got like, we've got like just over five minutes left. And I'm normally wrapping up by now, but uh, I'm gonna see this through. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get, um, I've got a little bit of um, thinner on here. I'm going to pick this body up. Here we go. Uh, I've got some heavy rusting stains on here. So I'm just running a thinner brush, a brush loaded with thinner, not saturated. Again, it's a, it's a bit of an experiment. I'm washing most of the stuff away, leaving behind a residue. I don't want to look like it's been rained on and it's kind of grimy running down like I would do normally on a tank, although that is kind of a technique that I'm using. I'm just trying to make it look fun and interesting. If it looks rained on at the end, that's cool. I just want it to look rusty and messed up. Trying to dry the brush out quite a bit now, so I'm just, rather than moving thinner around, I'm kind of 
kind of drying it as it goes. looking really good so I'm just taking my time a bit now just going in with a, a slightly more detailed brush a little bit of thinner in it and just finding those colors cleaning them up just to bring them out just to make those colors pop where there's some bold color I want it to show through when it's rusty that's cool it can be grimy and gross but I want those greens to shine through this is working. This is good. This isn't a sludge wash. I don't want it to just be on everything. If I'd use that dark green, it would be almost invisible. So lighters were definitely a good choice. Thanks, guys. is going to be so cool I'm just going over the wheel arches because I know there's green under there and I'm just agitating the grime off there we go look at that color coming through I wonder if you can really see it and there's a little bit of color behind here so happy with this this is just a bit of fun as well <laughs> not that it's never not fun but you know what I mean Ooh, okay cool last little bit then let's put the rusty grime away or rusting streaky rust rust streaks away clean that off my hands and I've got some really light rust and this is just gonna be good just to in a couple of areas A little zhuzh on the zhuzh machine and it's still not nine o'clock yet so I'm still not over this is great not gonna be over by that far at all right oh there's another one that's been undone for a while excellent <laughs> it's yeah be right with you I'll uh, just get some tools to take the lid off properly oh there we go right make sure I haven't got it all over my hands so, uh, I'm going to use the tip of this detail brush because it was actually really effective a minute ago. I'm just going to make sure it's the right yeah, consistency. I've got a lot of pigment in there because it can be quite runny and watery. So, I mean, where, where do I want it? I suppose I want a little bit on the top, right? I don't want it in the pool, so I'm trying to avoid that. I'm just in areas that I think lighter rust would be really good. Do you remember when I was putting like orange on it earlier on? So I was kind of concentrating a bit on the top down the side here. And I'm just kind of spreading it out. So when I start to see it pooling, I just trail the, the brush tip through the pool. I understand that having like a bright page on the worktop here is making it very difficult to see what I'm doing. So I, I, I'm so apologetic about my lighting. Something I really need to work on. It's also really good for like putting on some edges and bringing some details out, so that's quite handy. So I could like go around some of the windows if there's rust on the window. Do a little bit on the front over here. 
again, if it's starting to pool, just using the bristles just to drag it away from where it's pooling up. If it does pool, it's not it's not so bad. It's a, it's okay. I could go really heavy with this rust, and I could have done this instead of the streaking grind, but you know I didn't know what was going to work, so just kind of wanted to try a lot of different things. Maybe maybe doing gas and cars like in this way, maybe streaking streaking grime isn't the product to use. Maybe just do my other techniques and do a little bit of rust work on it, you know? If you're not careful doing these sorts of effects, if you do it too quickly, it can look like that you've just gone in with a cheap effect or didn't spend too much time doing it. And if you're not fussed about that, I suppose that's cool, right? But sometimes it's nice just to make it look like that it was intentional rather than... I just slapped it on. Even in a rush job like this. Okay, I'm done. I'm just going to let that dry there for a second while I just clean my brushes up and my workbench and then I'll be right with you for a sign off and then I'll change my paper out so that you can see what I've been doing because that would be nice right I'm going to get a bit more thinner here so that I can clean my brushes up properly <sighs> I need something to clean my brushes in I will do it in this white spirit pot here because there's hardly anything left in there now let's clean this one off Drop them in the water, get them in there, and I want to make sure I've got everything out of this brush so that I can pop them in here too. And then straight in the water. And then pop that over there. Clean that brush out too, and I think I've got a little bit in my dry brush. But that should be okay with just some water. There we go, cool. Talking to myself. Put that over there. A little bit of a desk tidy. Ooh. One of the big uh, wants for me in the studio is some paint racks that will go down a storm um, but you know bit by bit right okay let's bring in my old sheet of paper here because it's easier to see with all the lights on it there we go look at that There's so much difference it's really cool man I'm gonna hit it with a bit of air just for distance just because there's a couple of damp patches on there that I don't want to agitate with my fingers and if I wanted to, I could hit this again with some more varnish. Uh, I've spoken about varnish effects over the top of, um, like, painting effects. And that sometimes it's just going to, you know, the effect is is the glossiness or the the not-so-glossiness effect on it, the, the matte level. Um, half the effect isn't just the colour, it's how it, you know, shines. Uh, but on a model like this, it's just about colours, really, more than anything. Okay, so, um, I'm going to get the undercarriage here and I'm gonna get the furniture here I'm just trying to remember which way it goes around it goes on here it's probably all gonna come off the uh, undercarriage because it needs a lot more attention but I'm really keen just to kind of get it together and just see how it looks push that furniture up inside and It just slot into place now. <laughs> Come on. Got it the wrong way around, I think. <clears throat> there we go. This thing's supposed to go on like that, isn't it? Stop embarrassing me in front of my friends. Every goddamn week. <laughs> there we go. Like that. And then it goes on this way. Here we go. A 
voila. I'm well happy with it. Look at it, it looks so cool. I could brighten it up a little bit if I wanted to here and there. I don't know how I'd really do that. Maybe a lot more rust effects. Maybe I'll go and highlight some of the greens in there. I could let that all dry away um, over overnight, come back to it tomorrow or the day after. And maybe with, a, um, with my little detailed feathering brush, where is my, this little fella here? Uh, saturate the end in some spirit because it's really good um, at doing some really precision work. And I could just take those streaky or grimy effects away from some of the brighter green effects. Or I could just come in and just apply it thinly, thin glaze of that color over the top just to bring those, those greens up. But that was a bit of fun, wasn't it? It's a bit too grimy, really, in reflection. Um, it's actually coming out quite bright on the camera, so you're probably seeing a better version of it than I am. Uh, nice colour on the inside, nice interior. I could do a nice little stain in there. Like an Agrax earth shade would be really good in there. And to be frank, that's probably what I should have done as a stain rather than using the streaking grime. The rust effects are really good. Um, they were unnecessary. Um, yeah. If I compare it to this one here. I've now got two rusty cars. This one pops a little bit. This is one of the reasons why I wanted to use um, grime effects on it was to just kind of give this one a bit more definition. It was unnecessary on this car. But uh, I'll finish one. It does need its tyres doing, but I consider that finished. I play with that. That's, that's fine. <laughs> Leslie says, it's brilliant. Well done, man. Thanks. <laughs> Jeff says, good. No, very good. Love it. Dave, nice one. Thanks, guys. Is that the VW uh, that you used in the, that I used in the game with you? Yeah, it is. It's cool, isn't it? <laughs> the VW and the Renault 5. <laughs> Two small little cars that you'd never expect to see in a shootout. Um, yeah, for the tyres, what I'm going to do is probably paint them with Corvus Black by um, Citadel. I haven't used it yet, but I bought it for edging some bases for Skitari. It's supposed to be... Uh, uh, a, a near black grey um, so that might be a really good colour to use on them but I am going to maybe hit them with a bit of sandpaper and glue those wheels um, uh, and then when he's done I'll hit him up on Instagram I'll take a picture of him tonight and stick him on Facebook over on the Easy 8 Facebook page so you can see it, it's cool I love it, I love Gaslands man it's so much fun, um, brilliant so um, let's, let's come away from here uh, so many messages coming through, crazy where are they, let's, let's come away Anyway, look, it's been a brilliant night. I've really enjoyed painting that. It was such a departure from the norm of doing tanks. I love tanks, but, you know, I've been doing them so much. It, it's, yeah, <laughs> too many tanks. Too many. Stop. I've got so many more to do as well. I'm having a great time doing them. But that was fun. Well happy with him. Well happy. If you do gas stands, I really want to know. If you if you decide to have a go at it or you've done so, take some pictures of them, man. And go over to Facebook. Go to Easy 8 Painting Club uh, and put pictures up there. There is a link in the description to this video. Just down there. Go and have a look now. you got Easy 8 Facebook. you got Easy 8 YouTube. Duh, because we're right here. got Easy 8 um, uh, uh, another place. Instagram. We've got the Easy 8 After Party on Discord, which I'm going to be over there uh, momentarily after this show ends. So if you want to come and join Join me for a little bit of two-way chat. Come and join the rest of the community. Stop leaning on the table, Danny, because you're knocking the camera. Uh, yeah, come and join me and the rest of the folks over there. If there's not many people on, then I'll go and play some video games with you guys. If not, we'll chat, talk. Maybe we'll carry on painting. I've got a bit of cleaning to do. Uh, and I'm a bit hungry, so I'm going to go grab a snack. But if you want to come and join me, come and join me and join in. I've, I've overdone it. Okay, cool. Anyway, guys, I've had a cracking week. I'm going to be here next week. I'm not going to be here the week after. I'll tell you more about that next week. So until then, stay safe, be kind, keep on painting, and I'll see you guys next week. Take care now. Bye-bye. Cheers. <laughs> Gas hands. Pew, pew, pew. That's my impression of a car with guns. Okay, I'm done.